I was able to observe them as a married couple shortly uh, after their marriage uh, and they bought a house in Brooklyn Heights a large apartment uh, a house which contained two apartments in fact and uh, I went I lived there with them for a period of time uh, before I myself was married and uh, again here was a relationship of partnership uh, Dr. Du Bois felt himself to be quite self-sufficient and uh, was highly disciplined in terms of his work load and, and expectations of himself. Uh, my mother, on the other hand, was uh, impetuous, uh, deeply emotional, uh, and also a, you know, 25 hour a day worker. I mean, she worked like she 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 worked like there was no tomorrow. And this is her, and it's very very interesting to see the impact that that he had on her. Number one, uh, to to you know sort of bring her down to sort of encourage her to to calm her you to, mean. to calm her uh, to encourage her to uh, stop and relax encourage her to um, not be all the time argumentative yes <laughs> about whatever is going on in the world and he was much older too so and he, he had much a lot older of, of course wisdom. he was yes. much older yes uh, he did this in several different ways. One of the interesting ways that I observed was that he did this by by revealing how by how her impetuousness uh, interfered with his ability to to function and to continue continue his organized <laughs> way of living. Huh? Yes. Uh, uh, and and this is true in all aspects. That's just his work. With, but he's all he was highly organized as as a as, you know as an as an individual. And my mother. Uh, she got an enormous amount done, of course, because she was always, always producing. But she wasn't that well organized, and um, for for various and sundry reasons. And therefore, <laughs> uh, the two of them interacted and worked on each other, really, to each ben each other's benefit. Yes. Now I'm, I should add also that uh, my mother's relationship with Dr. Du Bois was very instrumental in. Uh, bringing him into contact with white radicals who respected, admired, and knew about the work of W.B. Du Bois. Du Bois, up until this time, hadn't had much to do with white people. Yes. Uh, he hadn't had much to do with them, in, you know, in a social way, in a, in a, in a I mean, there were times when it was necessary, but he had spent all his time on, on you know, with black organizations in the, in the South or with black organizations in the North and with black scholars and with, I mean, with, on black objectives and so on. So that he uh, had decided somewhere along the way, you know, that he wasn't going to expose himself unnecessarily to the kinds of subtle racism that interactions with blacks and whites are is, is inevitable no matter what no matter what <laughs> yes uh, and uh, my mother on the other hand uh, had uh, during this period successfully established some relationships with white radicals in the New York area in particular in uh, particularly in the Communist Party? In the Communist yes. Party and around the Communist Party. And around Party. The, mm -hmm, the Socialists and so forth. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. uh, and as a result, uh, she uh, sort of brought him into contact with some of these folks who admired Du Bois enough to, you know, to sit at his feet and to learn from him. Yes. Uh, and he hadn't known so many white folks who 
had this sort of reaction in response to him before. Uh, and this had a had an interesting uh, broadening uh, effect on Dr. Du Bois. I mean, it's it's described by some historians and some writers, you know, as a, you know she, that my mother guided me into the Communist Party, into this. Well, I mean, that, that's not true. I mean, it's not he, so cut and dry. He had been identified. He had identified himself with the socialist ideals in the 1930s, you know, uh, and before he had been a member of the original Socialist Party of America, but he left it because of its racism. And he had that kind of, I mean, that's, he, that was his approach to these so-called leftists, so-called progressives, so-called radicals uh, who were white on this issue, on this question. Mm -hmm. The primary of race. <laughs> yes. <Absolutely. laughs> so, uh, uh, that was the, uh, the influence was very important, I think, uh, because it broadened again him in, in a geographical way. Because it, here, here we we began. We were in the midst of this uh, and after war uh, uh, struggle with the, with the Soviet Union and That's and right. all the and the ideologies and this, so that from the would, American perspective, from propaganda, the American, yes, exactly, yes, yes. and, and uh, it was a, it was a. It was a, it, again, the relation, we came back to the relation, it, it was that kind of partnership in which each brought something to the other. Yes. Each gave up something uh, to the other. And uh, each seemed to glory <laughs> yes. in that interchange, in that, in that exchange. What a wonderful relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when and why did you decide to take the Du Bois surname at the time because you were you were Graham no your mother was McCann's name. oh McCann's McCann's uh, uh, my mother's maiden my mother's married name was McCann's okay uh, I decided this at the time that I uh, actually before they were I think before they were they were planned to marry you wanted to take that name. Yes, uh, the thought had occurred to me before that, but I don't think I had raised it with them until I learned that uh, uh, they were planning on being married. I see. And then I raised it with my mother, and uh, uh, she she was very much accepting of the idea, uh, and was sure that he would would also be accepting of it, and uh, suggested I speak to him, and I did. <laughs> 